other six lectures will be about. Um, so today's lecture is all about postsets. And postset stands for partially ordered set. And I'll define what that is later. Um, there's also something called a pre-ordered set, and I kind of don't make much of a distinction between them. But again, I'll say what those are later. The idea of the first lecture, so we want to talk about kind of applications of category theory. And in almost any application domain, if you've already studied that domain, you know way more about it than the category theory is going to give you. What the category theory does is come in, take the ideas from your area, and realize that they're part of like a conceptual structure that exists in lots of other areas. And so it's kind of like um, if you're an eyeball trying to see really well and someone says, I'm going to wire you to another eyeball, you say, well, is that going to help me see any better? And the answer is no, it doesn't help you see any better to, if you're the left eye. But it is going to help the larger depth perception structure if you can connect things together. So, so category theory is going, we're going to look into some domains where you could do more just in that domain perhaps, but you can connect things through using category theory and get some insights into your domain if you didn't already have. So what we're going to talk about today in terms of our real world application, as much as it is, is what we call cascade effects or generative effects. And these are, um, these are instances where your observations of something misses what happens when, your observation of the system misses what happens when you put systems together. So this comes under the name of like cascade, like you have some cascading failures, or in a good way, synergy, right? You have people talk about synergy and no one really knows what it is, but you know it's a good thing. And so what it is, is you have a group and it's capable of doing something, you have another group that's capable of doing something, you put them together and somehow they're capable of doing more than you expected. And in the same way, um, so, so let's try to draw a picture of this. So say you have four people and um, these two live in a family together, these two live in a house together. Um, but then at school every day, the, these two people <coughs> go to the same elementary school and these two people stay at home uh, or go to a work or something. So these are the parents, I guess, and these are the kids. You add these, and then you want to protect, this person's very vulnerable to disease, and this person's like really sick or something. You don't want this person to get sick. Um, well, does this person get sick from this person here? No. Does they, do they get sick from that person here? No. But when you join these two systems together, uh, the two kids like bring home the disease, right? That's bad. So you join these two together, and you get um, everyone's in one big partition. So this is the story of partitions. And it's just one example of, um, of post-sets. It's an example of cascading failures or cascading problems. So in each of these, we, we mark this like chance of infection, uh, false, no chance. Over here, false, no chance. But over here, true, the person gets infected. Right? So we have false plus false equals true, and that's somehow a something wrong, something weird. And we'll explain how, how what that is in terms of post sets and maps and joins and things like that in a minute. Um, but first, I, I think everyone knows what a set is. Uh, we said that. So by, by a partition on a set S, um, one way to think of it as it's a, um, a bunch of sets, a bunch of subsets Every pair is disjoint whose union is S. Right, so in each of these cases, I drew some subsets whose union was S, but the subsets were disjoint. But this is like kind of a very verbal way of talking about it. A, a nicer way is it's a surjection from S to P. So, or a surjection, where this is like the set of parts. Surjection means an onto function. So what this is saying is, if you have these four things, I could send this one here, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here. Sorry, this diagram's a little messy. But when I do that, and I look at the pre-image of this, meaning everything that maps to it, I get a part. And when I look at the pre-image of this, I get a part. And there's no parts that are empty. And um, 
And yeah, so this, this diagram here corresponds to this partition, whereas what diagram, what function out of, of this would correspond to the kind of most fine partition? What's the rejection? So, whoops. Uh, this room is really bad. Yeah. The identity. The identity, yeah. And which one would correspond to this one? It's the one that goes to the 1.7, right? Right. OK, so surjections out of a set are the same as partitions of that set. Is someone ringing? OK. OK, so uh, what I want to talk about is joins of partitions. Or I guess upstairs, we talked about joins of partitions. We joined those two partitions to give you that one. And um, but joins of partitions, as discussed above, <coughs> come from a more from a from a more um, basic <coughs> idea, which is order. And this whole class is about order. Partially ordered sets are ordered. So on the set of all partitions, say of three elements now. There's this one, slightly finer, than, slightly coarser than that is this one, then this one, and then this one, and then the finest one is this one. Can you guys read that? I have five partitions <coughs> in a three element set. And the order relation says this is coarser, this is coarser, this is coarser, this is coarser. That's coarser and that's coarser. So you get some kind of picture with five elements in it, but each element is itself a partition. So there's a five element set and an order that says this is less than this, this is less than that. And therefore, if this is less than this, which is less than that, this is less than that. Bottom is less than top. And that's what an order is, and we'll define a post set in, in a minute, but this is like a very simple post set that has most of the structure that all post sets would have. Um, so what I thought I would do is let people talk to their neighbor just for a couple minutes about um, post sets, about what we've learned, anything you want to say about why about post sets, and make sure you understand how you would construct, say, a four partitions of a four element set. Mainly just to get to know somebody, because you're going to talk to them again later. Uh, but also just talk about is there any questions you have about doing a four element set? So go ahead and talk to someone near you. <laughs>
So this idea of join we drew there, which looked like somehow we knew that if these two were connected and those two were connected and those were connected, then we get this. Join comes to us from this notion of order. So if there is no, no thing that's the smallest thing greater than both, then there's no join. But in, in this code, that every two elements has a joint. So the joint of this one with itself is itself, because it's bigger than or equal to itself, and it's the smallest thing it is. But the, and in fact, that'll always be the case. But the joint of these two is this one. It's like the max. Whereas the joint of these two is going to be this one. It's bigger than both, but nothing else is, is smaller than that. So join is something you can talk about in any post set. You can ask whether two elements or a whole set of elements has a join. You can also ask whether they have meets. And these will eventually turn into what are called co-limits and limits. And when I, when I um, so meet, let me say meet of A and B is the biggest, if one exists, the biggest element greater than both A and B. What? So a lot of the reason we're doing um, this POSET case here today is to introduce things that will eventually turn into much more general category theory. So the join of two elements is the smallest thing bigger than both of them, and the meet of two elements is the largest thing smaller than both of them. Um, but those will turn into what are called co-limits and limits in category theory. They will be a special case of co-limits and limits, um, which are kind of like unions and products. So, so let me define what a poset is. Um, and, and we'll go from there. So the definition, let S be a set. So you have a set, a post-set structure, or a partial order on S. Uh, let's call it a pre-order. Is a relation R subset of S times S. But I'll call it, but we'll write S1 less than S2 if S1 comma S2 is in R. It's like R is just sitting there to really just be a formal thing that's going to help us define what this little symbol means. And the rules are 1, S is less than or S for every S. Everything is less than itself. And 2, <coughs> if S is less than T, and t is less than u, then s is less than u for all, for all s to u. So this one's called the reflexive property, and this one's called the transitive property. And again, everything we're talking about today is going to have a is going to have a kind of um, correlate in just pure category theory, where but we'll try to make that more clear. Maybe if you've seen categories before, you can ask yourself how. Um, OK, great. So that's what that is. So let's give some examples. Um, all right. the, the natural numbers <coughs> less than is a good example. It's got elements like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, <coughs> etc. And the Hasse diagram is called you draw an arrow from something to something else if there's a if one is less than the other. So it's just a linear order. Okay, that's an interesting post step. There's also one where you just turn the order around. But a, a more so so zero would be greater than one and one would be greater than two for some reason. You just decide that's what greater than means to you and or less than and it'll it'll satisfy this problem. <coughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, would the Hasse diagram need to include all of the errors between 0 and 2 and 0 and 3? In the Hasse diagram, it's kind of the generating, I think, I, I'm not sure of the formal definition, but the way I want to draw these is that if there's a path from something <coughs> to something else, then you say it's less than. 
Okay. So in this picture over here, there's a path <coughs> over there, and therefore this one's less than okay. R. Is there a unique minimum generating Hasse diagram then? No. Okay. No. So any Hasse diagram that you think looks nice uh, <laughs> is fine with me. <laughs> there should be a unique minimum. Unique minimum? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, the post off. I don't know. Who maybe it's maybe it's obvious, but it's not obvious to me right now. Um, oh, yeah, that's the classic, like, what obvious means in a math class. <laughs> okay, so, um, so let me keep giving more examples. Oh, by the way, what is the join here? If you have two elements, say one and seven, two and six, whatever. Um, the join is supposed to be the smallest <coughs> element greater than both, if that exists. So, what is it? Max. Yeah. And the meet is min. So here, join equals max. That's an important thing you see. A lot of times in category theory, one thing that makes it nice is that it, you see your familiar friends coming up. So max, that's a friend. Um, min, that's a friend. So this is meet. So another example of a post-set structure on the natural numbers is what's called <coughs> divides. It's a weird symbol if when you write it out, but divides. So you have like 2 divides 4 and 2 divides 6, but 2 does not divide 3. So it, whether it goes into it evenly, 3 divides 9, etc. <coughs> this is a post-set structure because how would it look? Like 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 4, 6, uh, why did I do that? Five, <laughs> seven, seven, that one happens. Eight, nine. Okay, there. So that's a little part of the, of the Hasse diagram for the division <coughs> set, right? Two divides four and six, but two does not divide nine or three or seven or eight. Oh, no, it does divide eight. Right, so there's the picture. What is join in the... Is there a join? So if I have two numbers, what is the join of like four and six? GCD. LCM. LCM, yep. Yeah. That's a friend. And GCD, greatest common divisor, is also a friend. Which LCM in this case is what? 12? 12. In this case it's two. The means is two. Right, so if I take 4 and 6, <coughs> and I ask for the smallest, the biggest thing smaller than both, I get 2. And if I ask for the smallest thing bigger than both, apparently 12 is bigger than both, and nothing else is, is between them. Okay, so those are joins and meets. Um, so another example, a kind of more real-world example, um, is like the tree of life. Brendan uh, talked about. I don't know if biologists still think about the tree of life or whether it's like completely obsolete now, but <coughs> to me it's still something. So we have um, Abelis, I guess, and Sapiens. I did some research. <laughs> <laughs>